All right, people, I'm going to show you what I believe to be a clever way to balance the chuck on your lathe. I've been dealing with an imbalance in my lathe ever since I got it a few years ago. And I believe that anybody with a fairly inexpensive lathe uh, probably has the same issues. It happens more so with the four jaw chuck. And recently I've been using the four jaw for a project. The imbalance in my chuck was actually causing issues where it was shaking the lathe and causing my part to be uh, poor quality. So I came across a video on YouTube, which I will leave a link to in the description of this video, uh, of a guy showing basically how to use a online computer program and a flexing shaft and rotating it to do dynamic balancing. So basically he explains how it's done. He doesn't actually show himself doing it. He basically just explains that he did it to a, a BMW uh, automotive flywheel and uh, leaves a link to the program that he used. So I got looking at the program and I got thinking about it and wondered if I could use the program but a little different procedure to actually balance my lathe. We'll take a walk over and I'll show you the end result. I've got a bottle of alcohol sitting on top of the lathe to show you how still it is. Quite a drastic difference. That is with no weights. That's how much my lathe is shaking. So, a pretty obvious improvement. So if you want to hang around for a little while, I'll show you how with a computer program, some rubber hose, a dial indicator, a couple of drill bits, and a digital scale, you can achieve these same results. Now there are a couple of pieces to this puzzle and I can't take credit for one of them. It's a program that tells you where to put weight on a rotating mass. The way this program is intended to be used, you're supposed to have a rotating mass on the end of a shaft and you have some sort of measuring device like a dial indicator and as you spin it around it wobbles and you measure the wobble and then the program tells you where to put weight to correct the wobble. So I can't just put a dial indicator on my chuck because all that's going to do is tell me what the run out of my chuck is. This is what I came up with to be able to use that program to balance the chuck on my lathe. Here I have a grinder stand or pedestal with my dial indicator mounted on it and the needle on the dial indicator is simply touching against my lathe. Now my lathe wouldn't move enough if I were to have it solidly mounted on the floor. So what I did, and you might have to come up with something a little different, but what I did is I tipped my lathe back and I put a couple of pieces of rubber hose underneath the base on the front on each side. So there's two pieces of rubber hose here, two pieces of rubber hose over there. And now if you look, I can very easily with one finger push on my lathe and get it to move several thousandths. That's important because if it's only moving a thousandths with the out of balance, you're going to have a really difficult time to get it into balance. You need a tool that is sensitive enough to actually measure the movement or vibration to be able to correct it. If you can't measure the vibration or discrepancy, then you can't make any correction. So I've removed the jaws from my chuck because the positioning of those will affect the balance of the chuck and I want to balance the chuck itself. So this whole setup would basically be useless if it wasn't for the program because I don't have the mathematic skills or know-how uh, to be able to do this. So I'll take a walk over to my computer right now and show you guys how this is done. If you're going to do this yourself, read through all the literature before you go ahead and do it. But basically, 
It's telling me to have one, two, and three pockets. I have them labeled A, B, and C at 120 degrees. So what I did is I took a degree wheel and I marked off A, B, and C on my chuck. So now we come over to here and it's telling me weights in pocket one, which I called A, five. So I've got these neodymium magnets that are very strong. However you attach stuff to your chuck, you better make sure that it's on there good because if it comes off, it could damage something or it could seriously injure somebody. So these magnets are very strong. I've already tested them and I know that they're going to stay on. I did that with a protective shield over the lathe. So now we're going to put five on A and we're going to take my smartphone, put it on slow motion, turn the lathe on and record the movement of the needle. And in slow motion, we can see that the needle is moving from 12 thousandths to negative eight. So we got 12 and eight. So 12 and eight is 20. We come over to our program, we punch in 20 and we hit the balance button. The program will then tell us to put five weights in pocket two, which is B for me. So we'll take our magnets, move them from A to B, and we repeat the process. It doesn't matter if the needle's on zero, if you want to zero it out, you can, but all we're looking for is the sweep of the needle, how far the needle moves. I generally record for three seconds. And if we look at the movement of the needle now, we can see in position B, it goes from, so we're gonna call that nine thousandths to 7.5. So nine and 7.5 is 16.5. And click the balance button again. And now it tells us to put the five weights in pocket three. And every time you start, it'll tell you to move weights from A, B, C. Okay, so we're gonna turn the lathe on with five in position C. Turn the lathe on, slow-mo for three seconds. And we turn the lathe off and look at her footage and we can see the needle is moving positive four to negative three. So the sweep of the needle is seven thousandths. We type in seven thousandths. And now when we hit balance this time, the program is figuring out input data or the results from five weights at A, B, and C, and it is now telling us to put three weights at pocket C and one weight at pocket B. So we come over to the lathe, we go to C which has five and we'll put three on, so we'll go to B and we'll put one there, and turn the lathe on. Three seconds, turn the lathe off. And now we check the correction. And as you can see, we are just over one thousandths. So in four steps, it has taken us from 20 thousandths of vibration to one thousandths. Now by no means is this program supposed to work this quickly. I just got very lucky. 
you're supposed to have to do about 15 trial runs to figure out exactly where to put the weight. But I will enter the data of one thousandths. We'll actually call it 1.5 to see if it tells us to make another correction. I don't think at one it will tell us to make another correction. So we'll call that 1.5. Oops, that's two, 1.5. Hit balance, and it is telling us to keep it the same. We have made it 20 times better, and I am completely happy with that. So, uh, if I wanted to get it even more accurate than it is now, what I could do is I could use some more hose, perhaps, and make it so that my lathe moves even more easily. So that way I would get more of a discrepancy or reading from the same amount of imbalance. Or I could use a more sensitive dial indicator. Uh, as it is, this is good enough for me, but if you wanted to make yours even more balanced than this, you could simply use a dial indicator that read in tenths instead of thousandths. And so that would be one thing. Uh, the next thing is, what do you do now that you've figured out the balance or imbalance of your chuck? 